tonight on the 10 o'clock news, 22 states have sued the Trump administration to temporarily block a major policy change by the National Institutes of Health. Starting today, that policy change would have reduced federal funding for medical and public health research. A majority of medical research is funded by the NIH. News for Jack's reporter Eric Avani is joining us in studio to explain why the administration felt the need to slash funding and how that would impact, impact medical research facilities in our area, Eric. Well, to understand this news report, you have to first understand how medical research is funded. Now, research facilities receive grants with 30% of that money from the NIH going towards indirect cost of research. That indirect cost includes things like medical and clinical personnel, machinery, and the upkeep of the facility itself. Now, the Trump administration says it found cases of fraud and mismanagement of government money. So, today, the NIH was supposed to slash funding to 15% slash it down to 15%, which equates to millions of dollars no longer going to an estimated 2,500 medical research programs across the U.S. But after 22 states sued the Trump administration this morning, a federal judge ordered a temporary freeze on the funding cuts until the judge can determine if those cuts are constitutional. Local research facilities receive, that are receiving NIH funding are waiting to see what happens and how they will be impacted. From helping Moderna and Pfizer with developing and testing the COVID-19 vaccine to researching new medicines to combat heart disease, the Jacksonville Center for Clinical Research has been at the forefront of researching life-saving medications. But we do get a little bit of NIH funding as well. Dr. Michael Corrin is the JCCR director. I sat down with him to discuss what would happen if NIH-funded medical research programs experienced a reduction in their funding for indirect cost. When you threaten to take the, that money away, and for a big medical center, this is now tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, then you got a problem. While there is currently an array of viruses, diseases, and new medicines being researched across the U.S., Dr. Corrin says cancer is one disease that requires the most amount of funding. Coincidentally, the night before NIH funding was slated to be slashed, pharmaceutical company Pfizer aired this commercial about a boy beating cancer. Pfizer, of course, was trying to promote the fact that it's developing a lot of research, a lot of new products in the oncology area, in the cancer space. The NIH budget is $48 billion, making it the largest source of funding for medical research in the U.S. A majority of that money goes toward discovery of how certain viruses and diseases work and how new medications may combat those illnesses. Dr. Corrin says major research programs that are part of the discovery phase of research would immediately feel the effects of the reduction in funding. The University of Florida has a major medical research program. A university spokesperson released a written statement that says in part, university leadership is monitoring these developments closely and is working toward and is supportive of favorable resolutions. A smaller fraction of NIH money goes to clinical research facilities like the JCCR. This is where research involves patients who sign up to be part of a clinical trial after new medications have been deemed safe to try on humans. Clinical research also receives funding from other non-governmental sources. The reduction in federal funding will not immediately affect the Jacksonville Center for Clinical Research, but Dr. Corrin says somewhere down the line, this facility will be impacted. We do a lot of first in human trials here. But when we get a product that's a first in human product, it's already being studied for five years or more. And so if you shut off that spigot of innovation, then we're not gonna get those projects. So it could be a, an, an issue for us down the road. On the flip side, Dr. Corrin also says he understands the Trump administration's reasoning for reducing federal funding for research after the administration brought up issues of fraud and mismanagement of federal dollars. There is concerns that some of the things that are, quote, overhead related to research may be related to other things. I mean, that money isn't going where it should be going well, in, some, in some places. Right, again, we're using the facility for things other than research. Now, last year, there were several reports of fraud linked to medical research programs across the U.S. For example, in May of last year, the Cleveland Clinic paid more than $7 million to the Department of Justice to settle allegations of fraud that was linked to an application for financial assistance for research. Reporting live in the studio, Eric Avignet, Channel 4, The Local Station. Eric.